What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Another video for you today to cover the butt wink. We know it's one of the most characteristic flaws of a squat, especially the deeper that you get, but what causes it? And more so, what can you do about it? First of all, let's take a look at the butt wink for those of you who aren't familiar with it. As you can see, when I'm going down into the squat, all looks good. I've got a nice proper arch in my lumbar spine, my butt is back, but when I hit a certain depth, there's the wink. The wink comes from the pelvis changing position from an anterior tilt into a posterior tilt. But you can see as I come back out of it, I can pretty much immediately reestablish that positioning again. The proper positioning, back into, into an anterior tilt. So what's the issue? I can tell you right off the bat, guys, it's not a strength issue. Matter of fact, strength issues more so when your knees cave in at the bottom of a squat, basically to help give you a better mechanical advantage to push out if you have weak quads. But that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is we're getting this, again, change of the pelvis position, and I can tell you it's more of a mobility or a flexibility issue. So let's take a look at the board. As we all know, here as a PT, I like to look at things like a kinetic chain, because that's what we are. We're, we're one smooth kinetic chain from the point of contact with the ground to as however tall or however long our limbs are. And all of our forces ride up and down that kinetic chain. So when there's a dysfunction, like there is with the butt wink, here in the pelvis, you got to learn to look above and below, always, the site of dysfunction because that's usually how you find what the problem is. I can tell you, in the case of the butt wink, that 90% of the time, the source is going to be here below and namely in the hamstring length. So, as you see on this diagram here, we've got two versions. We've got an anterior tilt where you've got your proper arch in your back at the bottom of the squat. And then you've got your posterior tilt where your butt curls under at the bottom of the wink here on this side. The main difference here is the attachment of the hamstrings. I'm going to show you here with my hands in one second. The hamstrings will attach to the back of your pelvis here, the ischial tuberosity way back here, and then up around your knee. So you can see that those two points get farther and farther away. At some point, there's a point of no return. And if you can't, you're either going to stop going down into your squat, or if you're going to continue to go down, then it's going to have to shorten that distance because the tension is too great. It can't, it can't withstand that tension anymore. So you're going to give in. And usually our body will do just that because it's very smart. It's going to give in. That's what happens here. You're going to shorten that distance. So let's take a look at my arms here. If this arm here represents my low back and then my butt out here, okay, with the attachment of the hamstrings at the end, and this arm represents my femur. So here I am in the bottom of a parallel squat or lower, but right to, right to the bottom of the squat. If these distances between this elbow and this elbow, these are the attachments of the hamstrings, right along here, elbow to elbow, you can see that if I reach a point where I had no longer have any more flexibility left in that hamstring, what happens? That, posterior tilt. Here, good arch in my low back, can't, going down, going down, can't get there anymore, posterior tilt to the pelvis. Now I just brought this point a lot closer to this elbow. I relieved the tension on that hamstring muscle and now I'm good to go. Now as I come back out of the squat and I'm lifting up, I relieve the tension on the hamstrings again. Now I'm like, okay, now I can get back into that anterior tilt again because there's no longer any stress on the hamstring. So we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure that we're stretching our hamstrings and that we're doing it out of an anterior tilt position. I've covered this in another video, guys. If you haven't seen it, watch this video right here. I show you how stretching your hamstrings just because you're bending down and touching your toes is not the equivalent of stretching them the right way. If you want to make a change, if you want to eventually get rid of a butt wink, you've got to statically stretch your hamstrings, usually at night, like I say, before you go to bed if you want to have an impact on the length, but you've got to do it out of an anterior tilt position if you want to have any impact on your ability to squat without winking. Again, here's the video. Watch it if you haven't seen it. Secondly, to wrap up the video, I've said that there's always two causes, above and below. Above, we can have a thoracic extension issue. That means that I can't maintain the proper extension through my thoracic spine. So what happens? We know that sometimes as we go further and further down that we start to round forward because we don't have the ability to extend. That's why overhead squatting is a lot harder to stay upright than it is if you're not because it demands extension through the spine. So if I can't extend and I reach my point of no return here, what happens? Well, as soon as I start to break into flexion in my thoracic spine here, because I can't get any lower. Remember guys, the spine is the spine, it's connected all the way down. 
So if it starts to go into flexion here, it's going to eventually pull the entire spine down with it. So either way, here you want to do some foam rolling or some type of, not, not from a, uh, a stretching standpoint or a tissue quality standpoint, from a mobility standpoint. You're trying to do a self-mobilization of your thoracic spine. So that two-pronged attack working from above and below is going to eventually help you to get rid of your butt wink, but you've got to work on it. And there's also some things we can do dynamically. We're going to cover them in a video here shortly. We're going to talk about uh, stretching the quads properly in a dynamic way, which is different than the video I just did for you in the past about the static uh, stretching of the quads. And we're also going to talk about how to dynamically stretch the hamstrings to prepare yourself to do this better as well. That's a mouthful. It probably is more than an express video. But as you can see, guys, um, there's, a lot, there's a specific way to do things. There's a specific way to prepare to train. You can't just step into a gym and think that you're going to be an all-star it's just like anything else. You have to prepare to do it right. And at Athlete Next here, guys, I try to prepare you to do it right. I try to be your coach every step of the way. And that's what we do in our Athlete Next training system. If you haven't already and you want to start training right, then head to athletenext.com right now and get that system. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, leave a comment, a thumbs up. If you butt wink, what are your challenges? What have you tried to do about it? What has helped you? And we'll make sure that we can uh, start a discussion here below. Thanks, guys. We'll be back here again real soon. Um, three times a week now as we know.